All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen to our second video or the next video in line for our Algebra 2. Uh, we're going to be looking at linear equations and all of the th stuff that goes along with it. So we're going to be looking at slopes, we're going to look at intercepts, and looking at the different forms uh, or different ways that each equation can look. So we're going to start off with slope, something that we should be relatively familiar with. Um, slope is essentially change in the vertical direction divided by the change in the horizontal direction. So if you're given two coordinates that are looking like this, x1, y1, and x2, y2, if we wanted to find the slope, the change in the ver vertical direction, which is our rise, if you remember this from a while back, this is our rise and this is our run. Vertical change is up and down, and the y values are our up and down values, so we're going to be y2 minus y1 all over the change in horizontal, and remember change is just subtraction. The amount of change that you get back at the store, that's the difference or the subtraction here. So since we started with the 2, we have to start with the 2 as well for the x. So this is our slope equation. So it's m. We use the letter m to represent slope. So slope is equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So if I had the points 3, 7 and 2, 1, and I wanted to find the slope, I would say, okay, m is equal to 1 minus 7. So I find the difference in the y values divided by the same difference, same direction in the x, x values. So I said 1 minus 7, so I have to do 2 minus 3. And 1 minus 7 is negative 6. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. And negative 6 divided by negative 1 is positive 6. So my slope would be 6. I'd be going up 6 units and right 1 unit if we were to think about graphing. All right, so how are we going to use slope is going to come up here in just a minute. But I want to make sure we understand what I mean when I start talking about different types of intercepts. So intercepts are just where we cross the axes. So if you remember, we have an x-axis and a y-axis. So this is our x, this is our y. And the x-intercepts are where we cross the x-axis. And when we look for x-intercepts, we're going to let y equal to 0 because there's no vertical change. And then we're going to solve for x. We could do something like that. We could say, okay, what's the x-intercept for y equals 2x minus 1? Well, if I wanted to find the x-intercept, I would plug y equal to 0. And I would solve for x. So I would add 1 and divide by 2. And I would get a y intercept or sorry an x intercept of one half because that's my x value comma zero which was what we chose y to be well if that's an x intercept the y intercept is essentially the same thing but in this case we let x equal to zero and solve for y so i would say to find my x intercept or sorry my y intercept i would say two times zero minus one and 2 times 0 is 0, minus 1 is negative 1. So we would have a y-intercept of 0, because that's my x, comma negative 1. All right, so now we're going to look at the three forms of a linear equation. So the first one we're going to look at is the point-slope form. And to me, this is the most important one. So we're going to say... If I gave you m is equal to 7 and a coordinate to 9. Now, 
given that m is equal to 7 and 2, 9, we have a point and a slope, which means I can use the point-slope equation. And for the most part, we're going to use the point-slope form a lot. Um, the point-slope form is if you're given a point and a slope, you are going to write this. It's y minus y1 is equal to m times the quantity x minus x1. The ones with the little subscripts, the y1 and the x1, that is this here. This is x1, y1. The m is our slope, and then the y and the x are our equation pieces. So if I was to find the point-slope form of this equation, I would say it's y minus y1, which is 9, equals my slope times x minus x1, which is 2. And that is point-slope form, and I'm done. Now, for the most part, most of us have seen a slightly different version of this. We call it slope-intercept. Now, slope-intercept, we're going to start with the point-slope form, and we're going to simplify. So this is why the slope or the point slope form is so important. We start with point slope and we simplify down to slope intercept. So to simplify, we are going to say, okay, well, I'm going to get a pin here. Uh, distribute the 7. So I get 7x minus 14, and I'm going to add the 9 to the other side. So I get y is equal to 7x minus 5. So the red line, or the red equation, is point slope. The blue equation is now slope intercept. Now you have to remember that the 7 is your slope and the negative 5 is my y-intercept. So that negative 5 right there is my y-intercept. And the 7 is my slope. All right, well, I said there's three different forms, so let's look at the third form. The third form in this textbook is called standard form. Other textbooks, it's called general form. And essentially what that is, it says, let's put the x and the y on the same side of the equal sign. So we're going to, again, we're going to start with point slope. We're going to simplify down to slope intercept, and we're going to manipulate it to get standard form. So I have to minus the 7x from both sides. So I get y minus 7x is equal to negative 5. Well, in standard form, we like the a value, or the number in front of the x, to be positive. So if we multiply the entire equation by negative 1, this negative 7x becomes a positive 7x. The positive y becomes a minus y, and the negative 5 becomes a positive 5, and this is standard form. So here we have standard form, where standard form, I didn't write this, but standard form is ax plus, come on now, by equals c. So you're not allowed any fractions for a, b, and c, and a needs to be a positive number. All right, so again, I'm going to reiterate here, you're going to start with, pretty much every single time, start with point slope.
And then to get slope intercept, you simplify. And then to get standard, you manipulate. And it all depends on the question you're being asked. You might just be asked to put it in standard form, but start with point slope and work down to get to standard form. So I have two more pieces here. We have the first piece, which is horizontal and vertical lines. Horizontal and vertical lines are very specific types of lines. Horizontal means you got a slope equal to zero. So when you were doing the slope equation, you may have gotten something like this, which was four minus four over two minus nine. And 4 minus 4 was 0, divided by negative 7, which is 0. So our slope in this particular thing was 0. And if we wanted to write the equation for that line, the equation is just y equals whatever that number was for y. So in this case, it's y equals, notice that both of the y values were 4. So it's y equals 4. That's actually the equation for a horizontal line that goes through 4. And then we go to vertical. Vertical lines are ones that have slopes that are called undefined. This is where we divide by 0, and because dividing by 0 is illegal, this would be something along the lines of, well, 9 minus 2 over 4 minus... Four. So here we get 9 minus 2, which is 7. 4 minus 4 is 0. You have to understand that this is not an actual math statement. I mean, we can't really do that. So this is what we call undefined. And when we are to write the equation for this, the equation is x equals whatever the number is. So in this case, both of the x values were 4, so it's x equals Four, and that's the equation for a vertical line. All right, last piece here before I set you guys free. The last piece is parallel and perpendicular lines. Um, for let's start with parallel. Parallel lines must have the same slope but different y-intercepts. So if I was to say an example of let's have y equals one-third x minus 7. So the slope here is one-third. The negative 7 is my y-intercept. So in order to have parallel line, I would need the same slope. So in this case, I need the same slope. The slope is one-third. And... Just asking for a parallel line, I can just change the y-intercept to whatever I want. But what if it asks to go through the point 1, ah, 1, 1? Well, in order to go through the point 1, 1, I need the same slope still. So I need m is equal to 1 third. And then I look, oh, I have a slope and a point. So I'm going to use the point-slope form. And there I have it. I now have a parallel line to the line 1 3rd x minus 7. And lastly, we have perpendicular. If we have parallel, we also have to talk about perpendicular. Perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite and reciprocals of one another. So let's think about this line, y equals 1 3rd x minus 7. Let's change colors. And we have my slope here is 1 3rd, right? So we know my slope is 1 3rd. And I need to find the opposite reciprocal. So my slope would now be, well, this is positive, so the opposite's going to be negative. The reciprocal of 1 3rd is 3. 
And so the slope of my perpendicular line is going to be slope of negative 3. And let's say it goes through the point 1, 1 as well. So I'm going to use the point slope form. y minus 1 equals, oops, let's not do that, negative 3, because that's my slope, times x minus 1. And there we have it. We have a we have an equation of a line that's perpendicular to the original line here at the top, the one third x minus seven. All right, that finishes us off. Uh, I hope you learned a little bit of stuff about linear equations, and I will see you guys tomorrow.